has ended. How do I, can I resume for this? Or? So this one is on, yeah, on the left. Stays. Okay. And this one is not. Okay. So this one. All right. So you stream key. Looks like we're going to get a new set of uh. All right, so do we have a new stream key? Okay, so let's do output settings. And just change Facebook. Remove, let's add, add this down. And then let's paste it in here. And then let's get this one, server URL. And then let's go this one. And let's try to send it out live. This one. And um, now we got to see. There it is. So it's connecting. OK, so Great. it's connecting. Now the question is, is the audio still on? Yes. Audio in? Yep. All right. So now everybody's hearing me on Facebook, and YouTube is live. We are live. All right. Where are we at? Here or there? Here or there? Here? Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, I should be. You want to check? Yeah, okay. All right, guys, so where is, is here live on YouTube. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being early. We'll be starting shortly. And if you guys are on Facebook, we have some technical difficulties, but we made it. And we should be now streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. Got a great presentation for you guys. Got some people here locally today. Can lower the volume already. And we'll get started in a second. Jimmy, are you all set on your end? All right. You confirm? Yeah. All right. Very good. So let's get started. Uh, the, the, we had um, a lot more people confirm, but hey, it's a COVID world, right? So thank you for being here, guys. Thank you for the people that came and uh, invested your time and energy to be here with us today. This is AGM Marketing's first official uh, workshop. Uh, so again, welcome to uh, our incredible and very exciting facility in which we try to conquer the marketing world every single day. Welcome, everybody. All right, so the, the vision that we had with this place was to make it, an, make it a, a training center for people that wanted to dominate the marketing game and for me to create also an environment for our staff at AGM for them to be able to continue thriving and expanding. But as you guys can see, this is all a classroom and it's a space for you guys to come and learn. And I, had a, I have a great presentation for you. It's been, uh, it's been quite a year, to say the least. Oof, wow. I don't know about you guys, but... It's been one for the history books, not for uh, all the good things that happened, but on the contrary, all the intense, maybe negative things that happened that it's part of the game of life that you got to battle through and push through. Uh, aside from all those things that have happened in my life personally, um, it's about continuing to expand and looking for opportunities, and uh, we've been able to expand a lot. Our team at AGM Marketing, we had, uh, before COVID, uh, January of 2020 uh, was 47 staff. Today we are about to hit 100 staff 
full-time staff members at AGM. So we've been expanding like crazy. A lot of people are looking for our help. Uh, it makes sense because uh, uh, COVID-19 simply accelerated dramatically uh, the um, evolution of the internet. That's all that happened. It was gonna happen eventually, but it simply accelerated. And what, what was gonna happen in 10 years happened in a year. And the numbers on the internet have completely taken off. People don't go to the grocery as much, they go to Instacart now. People don't go to restaurants anymore, they go to Uber and DoorDash and these places. Uh, people don't congregate as much uh, socially, they connect on the internet. Like for example, right now we're streaming this live on Facebook and YouTube and a lot of people are from the comfort of their own home watching this, um, this workshop. So it is a very different world than what it was a year and a half ago and we either prepare for this new world or we're gonna uh, struggle in this environment. So it's about finding opportunities and today we're gonna talk about some of those opportunities and let's get started. I got a lot of training for you guys today. It's gonna be a lot uh, over an hour. If you guys that are here locally have a question, you can feel free to interrupt at any time. Somebody from the team is gonna run over a microphone to you because if you ask a question, anybody else can hear you, even on the internet, all right? So you can just raise your hand and um, I'll be happy to answer your question here live. So let's get started. Okay, so some people um, will be walking in, coming in, uh, and then uh, we'll try to catch them up. But for those of you guys that have no idea who I am, um, very simple, I'm gonna spend 20 seconds on this. Um, filed bankruptcy in 2010, became obsessed with the subject of marketing because I had no choice. Built an eight-figure brand called Natural Slim. Uh, founder of Attention Grabbing Media, which is where you guys are at today, uh, AGM. Uh, and then I'm known on the world of business as the Marketing Ninja. I have a podcast called the Facebook Marketing Ninja and I've been diving into the world of content creation for about five full-time years at this point. Uh, this year, our company, which is our young uh, and growing company, reached the uh, coveted status of being on the Inc. 5000 list. Uh, we made 438 as the fastest growing company in the U.S. in the last year. Again, like I said, we had 47 staff, staff. now we have almost 100. Our services have been in demand uh, because of people, a lot of people, um, they had no choice. They either um, go into the internet world or, or they quit their, their, their businesses and, and look for another opportunity. So we've been uh, looking, uh, a massive expansion, a lot of people asking for our help on the way. Uh, I wanna play a little video for you guys. It is a three minute video. For those of you guys that are online on Facebook or YouTube, or for, you, for those of you guys that are here that did not get a chance to attend our grand opening, or even if you attended our grand opening, which I see some familiar faces over here, um, this is a three minute video of that particular special day that, um, that um, a lot of people were a part of that day. So I'm gonna play that video. It's gonna help you understand a little bit more about who we are, and then we'll go on with the presentation. Uh, so let's hit play. Welcome to AGM Marketing. Uh, I wanted to share with you guys the uh, definition of marketing that you can find on Google. Marketing is the activity, set of institutions and processes for creating communicating, delivering, and exchanging offerings that have value for customers, clients, partners, and society at large. Now, my marketing definition. Before I give you the definition, let me tell you a word that I use, which is superpower. Superpower is an ability to positively influence the life of others with one's message, products, or services. My definition of marketing is the following. The forming of a brand or a person's superpower, followed by the development and execution of a strategy for the dissemination and distribution of it, which in turn leads to captured attention, which leads to the inevitable expansion of one's purpose. That's marketing for me. In 2014, as I was diving into the world of marketing, I um, was figuring out what to call my company, our company. 
And um, the word attention kept, kept on showing up every single time that I thought about a variation. I was brainstorming with my father and it became attention grabbing media because that's what we focus on, it's that particular process of capturing attention. We are the marketing ninjas here at AGM. Over the last couple of years, AGM has not only helped us get over 655,000 visitors to the KMAD website, but over 24 million people saw the content that they created for us on social media. I've realized my purpose to make a difference in the world by saving the lives of children includes good marketing. And good marketing consists of the right strategy and the right people behind it who are passionate about reaching as far as possible. With this formula, KMAD will help make more of an impact than any of us have ever imagined. And that's what this team of amazing people has done for me. And I have no doubt that they will do it for anyone else who they represent. So I just want to give a huge thank you and congratulations to all you guys here at AGM. Thank you, thank you so much. Ready? I apologize, guys, I turned on my microphone. So we're gonna be doing this every single week um, and um, uh, different subjects. Like the next one is gonna be in two weeks now as we get the whole thing uh, running and we're gonna be talking about the social media content strategy, which is a very important point. So again, it's doors open for you guys to come and learn so you can util utilize that what we're doing over here in the world of social media and get some results, similar results to what we're accomplishing here at AGM. So today, uh, we have a very important presentation because I want to talk about the state of marketing in 2021. Uh, what I can tell you right now, without an exaggeration, uh, I know my wife makes fun of me a lot because I tend to exaggerate things. Mm -hmm. I'm not exaggerating. Marketing has changed more in the last year than it has in 20 years since Google became a thing and YouTube started exploding and all these things. So I want to give you guys what is the focus right now? And that's the idea behind uh, the, the presentation today. Traditional marketing, uh, this is basically what we uh, no, uh, have, uh, we're, we're familiar with in the 70s, 80s, 90s, even way before, right? The days of Mad Men. We got classifieds, we got uh, magazines, and we got billboard ads, and uh, we got all these things on television and radio, and that was the way that we would actually advertise our products and our services. And uh, we traditionally would be uh, just being like this guy, praying that we would get return on investment. A lot of times we would actually advertise on radio, and we would just look at ourselves and be like, I think it's working, right? And that's the way it was. Like, I feel comfortable that it's working. Let me put some money on that. Uh, you, do a, you do a magazine, uh, half a page, and it costs you so much money. And you put all the energy on that magazine ad, and you think it's so beautiful, but you have no evidence if it actually worked or not. There wasn't any data science. There wasn't any analytics. Nothing for real. You can actually have a really good process in place in which you would ask every single person that calls, hey, what did you find out? Oh, in a magazine, which magazine? Oh, which ad? And then you can find out more specifically what was working or what was not. So that is traditionally how we've actually operated with advertising, not digital. And it was like that for ages. And we were accustomed to that. But the digital world changed everything, and it made us, should we say, spoiled, 
because it really did present to us information that made it easier for us to build our businesses very, very easily. Digital marketing on Facebook, on Google, on YouTube, LinkedIn, Amazon, all these places really did make the job of an entrepreneur so much easier because they have a lot of data and a lot of information that you can utilize to build a relationship. Well, it's very sad, but that is coming to an end. This simple process of putting your messages out there and finding audiences and retargeting them and bringing them a journey and sending them another message. If they bought X product, you offer Y product. If they bought Y product, you offered X, Y, Z package. Those days are pretty much over. And uh, this is traditionally what we had, right? Audiences, they see the ad on social media. This is an example of one of our accounts. And um, we invite them to our website. They get to the website, and then the prospect is added to an audience. And we have something called a digital footprint. If somebody visits the website, we had that piece of information. Companies like Amazon have thrived on this particular process. Um, raise your hand if you have been at some point uh, on Amazon looking at a purse or a shoe or some kind of product, and then you open up Facebook, and for some reason that product follows you. Yeah, everybody here, right? So that is coming to an end. Imagine, that statement is a big statement. That whole thing that I just explained that has helped all these companies thrive is ending completely and utterly disappearing, all right? So that sounds pretty dark, right? But that's a reality, and I'll explain to you more details. Uh, when somebody will be added to the audience, let's say that they added this product right here. This is a D3 and K2 supplement. Well, now I can say, wow, that, that customer likes vitamins. Let me offer this other vitamin. Let me offer this package. It's a big deal because I can create more value out of every single person that's coming in. And uh, I will present other offers, right? Like, thank you for buying our stuff, and here we go, right? The 2020 reality. Anybody here an iPhone user? Raise your hand. Okay, generally, it's about 50% across the country. In this room, it's about 80%. Right? So iOS users are opting out of tracking at 94% rates. When this whole thing began, a lot of people that were like, you know, saying, oh, it's, a big, it's not a big deal. Nothing's going to happen. It's okay. Only a small percentage are going to opt out. This is what's happening. People are getting messages like this when they open up their apps. Raise your hand if you've seen a message like that. Ask app not to track you. And the first thing that shows up is not allow apps to track me. It's saying, ask them not to track me. So people are naturally inclined to click that first option. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, TikTok, uh, Amazon, every single internet platform, internet product, internet app, it is required now by Apple or else they get deleted from the app store. That's just the beginning of the conversation. If they don't all offer that message, they're going to get wiped out completely from the App Store. That is basically Apple's rule, and that is their game, and it is their platform. They decide whether you stay on their platform or not. So all these big tech companies are right now at the mercy of Apple because they're the ones setting that rule. But Apple is not the only one. Google, uh, uh, Google is also doing similar things. Google is trying to also protect the privacy of people. Cookies are disappearing in 2023. They already announced it. In a year and a half, you're not going to have data being sent back to you that is from what's happening on your websites. So whenever somebody lands on a piece of your uh, internet, what I like to call your digital real estate, you're not going to know what's happening with that person. Sounds pretty dark, right? But that's the reality. Why is this happening? The new marketing world is basically going back to this particular environment here in which we don't have data. You're going to have to ask questions when somebody buys something. How did you find out from us? I don't know how long you guys have been in business, but I used to work in my, my dad's company, which is our brand here in the USA called Natural Sim. And when I was a little kid, I was 17, 16, was my first job ever. We had a form and we had to ask people, where did you find out about us? Radio, newspapers, magazines, television. Where did you find out about us? And we had to tabulate that. And we need to find out what's working best. Hey, this week we have 47 people sign up. 
12 of them came from the radio and we invested so much money and five of them came from the TV and we spent a lot more money so we need to pour more money onto radio. And it was like that. That was the old world. Well, that's the new world again. We're going back to that particular environment in which we have to pray for return on investment. We have to be like, I'm going to invest on this Facebook campaign, I'm going to invest on this Google Ads campaign, and I'm going to hope that I get a return on investment. That's the way that marketing has always been. Digital marketing simply spoiled us, and it got us like, I have clients today that won't invest a penny unless they see evidence of how exactly that campaign is giving them performance. And that's not going to be the future, and we need to adjust our mentality. Why is that happening? Well, let me give you more information. You think I'm exaggerating? Well, today I installed, this, these are screenshots from today. Today I installed uh, iOS 15. Anybody installed a new one? iOS 15? Check this out. This is directly from uh, the, uh, the, the, the phone. At the core of iOS 15 are a series of privacy updates designed to block ad trackers. Cloak web browsing in Safari. You know, I had to look at the definition of cloak and it says cover. Right? You can't see web browsing in Safari and enhance user privacy by reducing the amount of information popular apps like Facebook. The attack is also in a big way against Facebook. They are, they're, they've gone to war. Can gather about user behavior. Why? Because Facebook lives off of data. That's what has made them the giant that they are today. They have been able to give us a lot of data and we've been able to use that data to grow our businesses. And we've been spoiled because they made our lives easier for so long already. And now we got to think about things. So you guys might be thinking a little bit like, should I be getting sad and start crying right now? Like, right. The opportunities are pretty big, but only for the ones that pay attention. So guys, first of all, good job on being here. <laughs> because you're going to get yourself educated on what you need to be doing so you can actually take advantage of what the new opportunities are. So as I, uh, look at this, this one that came out. I don't know if you guys have noticed that I took a screenshot on the next slide. Mail privacy protection. This is on Apple, all iPhones. 50% of every single cell phone in the United States, and it's a little bit more than that, is an iPhone. E-commerce, social media sites, and newsletters often embed a so-called tracking pixel in marketing messages. This is language for the non-business marketer like us, right? And it's not often, it's always embed. This pixel allows senders to monitor information such as what other apps you use, how long you spend reading through email, and other personal information. Mail privacy protection blocks these pixels and obfuscates your email by behavior. Whoa. So wait a second. So if you read something on an email now on your Apple Mail, I'm not going to be able to see whether you opened up that email or not? That's right. I don't have any data. If you clicked on it, what's your name? Mickey. Mickey? If Mickey kicks, clicks on it and goes to my website and buys something, you don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's working or not. For me, as a business owner, if I'm not educated, I would be like, I guess email marketing is not working. I'm getting sales from who knows where, magical money, but it's not coming from my email. I don't see any data on that. That's what Apple is doing right now. And Google is following suit on this. Hide my email. This long requested feature allows Apple email users, this is a different thing, to generate new and random email addresses for social media and e-commerce sites. Whoa. So if somebody comes to the AGM, like you guys, and you scan that QR code, and now I have your information, which by the way, there's a QR code there that, so I can capture your information and send you promotions, all right? If you scan that code, if you give me your email and your phone number, Traditionally, I grab that email and I give it to Facebook and I say, Facebook, can you please help me find these people so you can send them another promotion and I can keep on a conversation? Over. Done. Why? Because they're masking your actual email. If somebody buys your product on your website, now with Apple, you have the ability to give them a fake email that, uh, Facebook is, uh, that, that Apple is providing to them. All right? So you don't have information. That's the way it is. It's super strange. Now, this is going to be an optional thing. Like, you're going to have the ability to give them your real email, or you can just hide them so the company doesn't have to have your real information. So that's the world that we're going into, right? So I installed iOS 15 today on my phone, and the first thing that shows up is this thing, mail privacy protection. This is where all customers are going to get now. Every single iPhone user with an iPhone 15 installation 
is going to get this message. Uh, by hiding your IP address and loading remote content privately in the background, even when you don't open the message, this makes it harder for senders to follow your mail activity. And you have two options. First option, protect mail activity. Second option, don't protect mail activity. What are you going to select? You know who are the only ones that the 6% that are opting in? Me. <laughs> Ollie. Business owners, the marketers that understand the value of personalized advertising. I don't want to open up my Facebook and start seeing makeup. I want to see other marketers talk to me about business. I think, in all honesty, it's stupid, this whole thing, because I enjoy getting presented with products that are going to make my lives better that are gonna give me better results in general. That for me is a great experience, but how do I convince 94% of people out there that feel that it's kinda of like, I don't know, the end of the world, that people, brands that are here to service you get your data? I can't, I won't be able to convince. You have a question? Which oh. Dan? What press the long, long press the button, because it's off. Check. Yeah, there we go. What prompted Apple to, to make that change? What, was it the customers? Wow, or? what a great timing for the question. Uh, okay. <laughs> what, uh, what made Apple start making these changes? It's not Apple's fault. They're adjusting to the world. Why is this happening? Right? It's called privacy. Things happen over the years, and Apple was at the center of the attacks. Many things happened. Uh, some of those examples of the scandals were uh, Yahoo accounts, that happened several years ago. Uh, uh, 500 million Yahoo accounts were breached. Passwords, information, bank accounts, all kinds of things. LinkedIn got their entire platform broken into, and emails were spread and sto stolen. The biggest one of all was Cambridge Analytica. Several years ago, no company has been more publicly attacked than Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg was put in Congress and questioned and questioned and beaten to death uh, by all kinds of people that didn't understand the internet, asking questions about data. All right? So it's, it's a big, big deal what has happened on privacy. People were actually starting to doubt whether Apple had the ability to protect the user's information. And that's why Apple's marketing campaign, which you got to give them something, whether you're an iPhone user or not, there have always, there, they have always been brilliant marketers. They're um, focus over the last several years has been privacy. If you look at all their ads, they all revolve around, we're here to protect your privacy, privacy matters, it's important. Because of that, privacy includes everything, even your online activity is privacy. Not only your emails, phone numbers, not only what you're buying, every single step of what you're doing. That digital footprint, they believe, Apple believes, it belongs to the individual person, not to the world out there to see. So they're protecting people. That's their opinion. And they're using that as a strategy to get more attention so they can keep on growing. Oh, if I buy an iPhone, I'm going to be protected. Email privacy, website privacy, data browsing privacy, all that stuff, is, they're going deep on that. And Google, again, has to follow suit because a Apple is going so aggressive with this that if Google doesn't, they're going to look like they're the bad guys in the whole thing, right? Because just being giants like they are. So it's going to be for everybody. So what now? Like I said, are, are we going to cry? Uh, are we going to uh, rob a bank because, oh my God, we're not, we're not going to get revenue? Um, I can tell you right now, we're doing really well in what we're doing, but it's because we have the right strategy. Do we start a cannabis business maybe? Maybe that's going to boom? No, that's not the plan. Do we go to Vegas and just invest all our money and try to get lucky? No, that's not the plan. We got to adjust. And that's the key to being successful in this environment. Every single year, marketing changes. Not every single year, it changes so aggressively like right now. But still, it is part and parcel of the world today that we live in that marketing will continue to continuously change. When the Cambridge Analytica scandal happened, which I, I, was, I was super into Facebook at that point, I've always been a big fan of the platform, I knew it was going to at some point make massive, massive changes in the, in the, in the uh, ecosystem of the internet. And this is the future. It is just beginning. The lack of visibility that we have right now is only at the early stages. It's going to keep on getting more and more intense. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, some of you guys might be thinking, uh, you know, it's not really a, uh, a big deal. I'm just, I don't want, I, I didn't understand 
Maybe you guys are like, I wasn't successful before in the last couple of years. How does that affect me? Well, there's an opportunity for everybody, whether you're just getting started or and you want to understand social media marketing, it's going to apply to you, or you were doing well with e-commerce, with Amazon brands, or generating leads, and now you need to adjust. So it's applicable to both of you. Ollie? A male, uh, let me see what's going on here. A male online, just so we get some of the online questions, is asking if you think or know if Android will follow in the same footsteps. It's owned by Google, so it is going in the same direction. So Android, for example, uh, which is actually uh, the other 50% of the smartphones, uh, they will actually uh, have to abide by whatever Google is doing, which is, for example, no cookies in 2023. That's a big deal. Somebody visits the website, you will not be able to track that. So I believe they're going to follow suit. They, they're going to have no choice. But still, it is such a massive number when you talk about 50% or more that it's time to adjust your strategies, all right? So, this is, I'm going to give you free keywords, so now I can talk, I was being all Debbie Downer, right, and all negative about what the world is today. Let's talk about what we're going to be doing now to actually do well. Not only do well and succeed and, and, um, and survive this whole thing, but thrive in it. How do we thrive? How do we get to the next level? Three words. First, party data. First party data, let's uh, define what that is. The acquisition of the prospect's personal information or data directly as volunteered by the individual. This is my own definition. But that's basically what we're all saying as marketers. First party data has to be your focus because you control that data. If you have a person's phone number, you can text them and you can find out exactly what's happening. If you send, them, if you, if you send that person from a text message to your website, you will know exactly what's happening. Why? Because on your website, it is your property. So people that are landing directly there from your own properties, which we also call your own media, you will have access to that data. So being able to see somebody purchase something and then being able to understand, oh, um, Anthony actually purchased this particular product. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell this other product because it's going to complement them well. So acquiring first party data has to be your focus from now on, which in other words is building your own list. What does it mean for social media? Social media platforms now become first party data acquisition platforms. So from being platforms to sell your products, they now become platforms to acquire prospects. You know what I mean? So Facebook is still the biggest media company on the planet. They have 250 million active accounts on the United States alone. It's a lot of human beings. Is social media irrelevant? No. They have more attention than any other media company in the planet combined. CNBC and all these, um, I think I accidentally closed it, so let's see if I can go back to it. All these platforms, all these media companies out there in the world, they wish they had as much attention as Facebook and Instagram. They don't, so they're still really valuable. Why? Because what is the name of the game? The name of the game is everywhere in this building. It's attention. If you have attention, you can succeed. If you're lacking attention, you're going to struggle. So we need to get that attention. But the strategy changes because if you focus only on bringing people from Facebook and Instagram to your website, you are not going to be able to continue a relationship with these people. So what do we do now? On Facebook and Instagram and all these platforms, you create content. Creatives are really important. Videos, copyright, images are going to be essential. And you focus on this particular definition of marketing, which is the ability to look for and discover opportunities to capture attention in any environment to further one's goals in business. So we got to look for those opportunities. By the way, if you guys uh, on your screens, you should all be seeing the exact same slides. It should be changing with me. It's not changing at all on yours? It stopped over there, huh? Uh, some, it didn't. Some, it stopped. Some went out. Okay. Well, if you guys cannot see it well, let me know. That was the, again, it was the original idea. It's our first workshop, guys. But the original idea was for you guys to be able to follow along with us over here. So what is the opportunity right now? Opportunity. Opportunity right now, there's been many opportunities over the years, is to collect email subscribers, messenger subscribers, Instagram DM subscribers, and phone numbers. 
That's the focus. I would even say for anybody that's out of the country, like some of the people that we might have here on Facebook and YouTube, WhatsApp subscribers, they opened up their APIs. Facebook has been um, obviously preparing themselves for these changes. So they have been giving us abilities to capture identities before we send them to our uh, online properties. So the focus has to be acquisition of these prospects so you can put them on a customer journey. Meaning that you're gonna be able to get these people to see a video ad, for example, an image with some copy that explains what the product is. And instead of sending it to the website, we're not doing that anymore. We need to focus on bringing them into our world. So rather than relying on paid advertising for one-off sales, we can use them as an opportunity to gather customer first data. Customer first also refers to the person is volunteering to give you that data. If somebody goes to Facebook and they see a video and they land on your website and you can retarget them, these people are not volunteering that data. You are basically using it because the third party, also known as Facebook, is giving you access to that data. Third party is disappearing. First party is the new big thing. So whenever you guys have opportunities, like for example, I invited you guys to come over here to the workshop and I put a QR code over here at the front. You scan that thing, you're gonna get something valuable. In our case, I offered anybody that would come over here a special gift because of the effort of showing up live. So you get access to a course that we usually sell for, for, for free. You all get access to that course. It's called the Social Media Foundations course. But when I use that, I am focusing on getting first party data because you guys are gonna scan that if you want that you're gonna to have to give me your phone number and your email, and that's the exchange that I get from you. I give you something, you give me your information, and I get a chance to put you guys on a customer journey. So down the road, when you need help, you think about us in the world of marketing. Hopefully you choose us over, over another marketing company. So you wanna get that customer first data by building your messenger, your email, your SMS, which is phone number list, and Instagram, and even WhatsApp list using lead generation advertising. Lead generation. You can generate identities. So the way, the way you do a business today, um, uh, we're, gonna do, we're gonna keep on doing content, but when you wanna offer sales, when you wanna make purchases, you wanna get people to purchase your stuff, you don't send them to your sites anymore. You bring them into your world and you make offers in your world. Additionally, this strategy, can bring new shoppers through the funnel and ultimately pay off better than trying to get them to buy on the first interaction with your brand. So in all honesty, I've been doing this process for a long time regardless. So we have a list that have millions of people on it. Our brand, Natural Sum, we've been acquiring prospects for ages. Here in AGM, we've been acquiring prospects for a long time. I have lists in some cases in the millions of people that I get a chance to provide value, nurture, educate, inspire, entertain, give information about what they're trying to get from us, which leads towards trust, which leads towards revenue. So here's an here's an example of how this whole thing works. So you got images, you got videos, you got things that you can do to generate leads. This one over here is uh, what we call a free guide. I'm giving you an example of one of our clients. His name is Dr. Eric Berg. We do, uh, this is a resource over here that shows people how to get acceptable food list so they can stay on the ketogenic diet. We give them that value. In exchange for that value, they're gonna give me what? Their emails and their phone numbers. If they don't wanna give them to me, then fine, it's our decision. I won't give them my value because I put energy in putting this together. It is an exchange of valuable, it's, this, is the, this is what we're doing, right? It's called bartering, right? We got something of value that we put together and they're gonna give me something of value, which is their contact information. Over here, this one over here, and the second one, it's a quiz. One of my favorite lead generation strategies over the years has been quizzes. Every single business, no matter what it is, brand can put together a quiz that problem solves or presents to people a solution. For example, I have a Facebook ads quiz. Find out if you're knowledgeable on the subject of Facebook. If you guys go to, you guys wanna try it out, this is all in Messenger. You can go to m.me forward slash the ninja marketer, uh, and that's gonna open up Messenger channel, and you can type in the word quiz. 
And that's going to start you on a quiz that we deliver inside Messenger, which is actually simple to set up. And we use it as a lead magnet to bring people into our world. And now, of course, we're going to have to do our best to provide them value. So this is how it looks, right? Somebody comes in, and then we can uh, give them a little bit of information. It's all automated. The person replies. Of course, there is a learning curve. But the good news is that we help you solve that learning curve here at AGM. We really do give you the information that you need so you can actually get all this set up. So of course, you're going to have to put some energy into learning a couple of new things, but they are simpler than ever. Technology has done a lot of things for the world. One of the things that it has done is that it has simplified things dramatically. We used to have to go to India to build very fancy websites. Right now, we can build websites ourselves, uh, and things have become much, much easier over the years. Okay, so the money's in the list, right? Somebody, have you, anybody has heard that saying before? Yeah. Raise your hand. Okay, well, more specifically, the money is in what you do with the list. So if, if we're going to work on generating prospects and getting emails and phone numbers and a lot of subscribers in our world, that is completely worthless if you don't have a strategy to continue providing value to these people and continue doing nurture to them is what i like to uh, use as a, as a as a word to describe it your number one overall marketing metric when it comes to this and before we get we, before we jump into that let me emphasize on this point you need to create a lead generation strategy just to recap right as a business whether you are trying to service people with a service, or whether you are trying to get people to buy a product on e-commerce, you still need to focus on lead generation. So we all need to focus on the same thing, getting phone numbers and emails and identities. And then you need to put these people on a journey. And that needs to be built. And here's the good news about this. When you build it out, either yourself or hiring an agency like us to build out this journey, all you got to do is turn on that faucet and get these leads to start coming in identities and get them on the nurture sequence and if you want more you more aggressively turn that thing on but you can actually use facebook and instagram and linkedin and tiktok and all these platforms you can now use these platforms to generate leads to bring people into your world and that's pretty much unlimited when you look at the numbers of people on social media you have unlimited scalability all you got to do is bring them into your world so as you're focusing on that, how do you know if your marketing is working? Well, there's a term that I recently learned. I went to a convention last week, uh, which is the biggest marketing convention in the world. And uh, a speaker that I respect a lot talked about this particular metric here. And it's called MER. Anybody has heard about that metric before? M-E-R? Michael has heard about it? All right. It says marketing efficiency ratio. This is the new focus for all digital marketing in general because of the changes in the digital landscape. Referred to as blended ROAS. Let me define ROAS. Return on advertising spend. If I invest a dollar in Facebook, how much am I getting back? Four dollars? I got a four ROAS. If I invested uh, $10 on YouTube and I got $30 back on YouTube ads, I got a free ROAS. For every dollar, we got three dollars back. That's been a metric that we've been using for a long time. So now the focus has to be blended ROAS, meaning that you're advertising on individual areas and you're generating leads and you're looking at your company as a whole and seeing how it's actually uh, providing profit in general so you can keep on scaling that side of things. Referred to as blended ROAS because it refers to evaluating the ROI of all online advertising compared to other channels. So you can compare other channels like television, like radio, like magazines, et cetera, with your online advertising. It should have its own set budget, whether you're doing Google or Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is that you're advertising on digital, it becomes one thing. I used to be very focused on Facebook as a platform. Right now, there's many other opportunities outside of Facebook because of how limited we are in the view. Facebook used to be the best one at giving you data. It's not important anymore because nobody has as much data as they used to. So more specifically, MER looks at your total revenue divided by total advertising spend. We're doing $100,000 in revenue and we spend $20,000 in advertising. We got a MER of five, right? We're investing $2, getting $10 back. 
Organic content, this is another thing, I'm, I'm giving you guys some bullet points about what to focus on right now. Organic content was a big deal for the first 10 years of social media. And then it went down and people started paying less attention to it and paid advertising became a big deal. Well, organic content becomes incredibly valuable again. Having a content strategy in which you're posting value, even though not many people are watching it, has to become a big part of your strategy right now. Because that's gonna help you keep on building audiences, even though slowly, and it snowballs in the world of social media. And here's the thing that you guys um, still need to pay attention to. Data of what's happening on Facebook and on the Facebook servers, which are Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, WhatsApp, data of what's happening in TikTok is still available to you. We still have access to that data. What we don't have access to is what happens when they leave the platform. Cookies, pixels, codes are becoming uh, irrelevant. And those cookies and pixels and codes are outside of the apps themselves. But when Facebook, people are using their platform, this is their platform. They own it. Whatever is hosted on Facebook servers, they can use it however they want because you are volunteering to use that platform. That's basically them directly giving you the data. So why is this important? If you do content, anybody knows um, Dr. Rick Berg, right? For example, we post content every single day on social media. Anybody that's watching those videos, we have that information. If uh, Anthony is watching Dr. Berg's videos, I know not only if he's watching him, I know how long he's watching these videos for. If he's watching 25% of them, 50%, if he watched the video on zinc, or if he watched the video on the keto diet, I have all that information because it's being hosted on Facebook's servers. I can keep on using that information to continue to build a relationship. What I won't have anymore is if somebody watched the video on the D vitamin, if they went to the website and purchased. That I will not know. But if they watch the video, I will still have that data. All to summarize that still doing content on social media, graphics, videos, images, value, blogs, article, talking about you and your brand, whether you're a personal brand or you have some kind of like ability to provide value, is still very important. Dr. Berg talks about uh, diets and ketogenic diet and, uh, and uh, intermittent fasting. I talk about marketing all the time. People like Damon John, he's talking about business uh, and he's helping people understand the world of business and how to make smart decisions and how to pitch their products. That's his subject. That's what I like to call his superpower. Mr. Chick Correa, who passed away uh, very early this year, his superpower is uh, the subject of uh, music, inspiration, entertainment, and he would talk about it all the time. We, we had some of the funnest time getting chick on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Natural Slim talks about um, metabolism and energy and weight loss, and we talk about it all day long, consistently, nonstop. Every single place that you go, you talk about it. You consistently communicate what your value is. But like I explained earlier, it's not about Facebook anymore only. It's not your only strategy. Testing new ad platforms has to be a part of the equation now. And there are other opportunities. For example, TikTok has been a booming social media platform. The fastest growing social media platform in history is TikTok right now. Faster than Instagram, Facebook, and any other application out there. So they are a force to be reckoned with. So putting content out there is valuable. It's great. You don't catch fire on any other platform faster than on TikTok, but advertising on TikTok is also extremely effective. At this point, it's a good platform to start testing. There are things that I'm looking into right now. We're talking about the state of marketing in 2021, right? There's things that I'm super, super excited about that we are starting to test. Hulu, anybody has an account on Hulu? A lot of you guys do, right? So Hulu advertising has done something that I believe is gonna be a big part of the future of all these media uh, um, outlets. They have gone back to 1980s and 1990s where you had no choice but to consume the ads. You had to watch the ads. And that was the value of television. If you wanted to watch the Super Bowl, uh, you had to watch the ads. If you wanted to watch your TV show, you had no choice but you had to watch the ads. 
YouTube is doing the same thing. Uh, Hulu is doing the same thing. They're making you consume the content. So we're going into a new era right now in which attention is going to be there again. For a long time, television became irrelevant because you had DVRs. There's no such thing on YouTube. You have to consume ads. The DVRs that we used for a long time, you could just fast forward the commercial because you were pre-recording the whole thing very easily. You never had to consume a commercial. And people were wasting money on commercials like crazy. On Hulu, you got no choice. So now you can actually create Hulu advertising. And that's an opportunity for brands to also be a part of at this point. And they are taking off in a big way, even for small businesses, small e-commerce brands, anybody out there. Pinterest ads is also a platform to pay attention to. Very heavy female demographic. If you have an advertising budget, you need to split it up in all these places. It's no longer go all in on Facebook. Um, several years ago, we actually had a visit to, with a top marketer, and um, name is Gary Vaynerchuk, and uh, my wife and I and my father, we went to visit him in 2014. And he said, Manuel, every single penny you have, put it all on Facebook, every single penny, ride the wave. It's the most affordable platform right now when it comes to attention. 2021 right now is not the same thing. The cost across all these platforms has equaled out, and the value of having Facebook's data has gotten down dramatically. So now is the time to test new platforms. So superior ad creatives is also an important part of the new digital marketing world. I used to say traditionally that any ad, no matter how horrible it was, bad quality it was, would perform well in front of the correct audience. But the best creatives in the world, the most incredible ads, would not get a single purchase. I'm changing my opinion on this because right now you have to go broad. You cannot go micro anymore. You're gonna have to target a lot more people. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. But creating more high quality content is important. Right now, quality is senior to quantity. I want to make sure that you guys don't use that to start putting very little content out there and start doing one a month or something like that. But right now, the brands that put quality content with quantity are the ones that are going to stand out and start taking a bigger share of the pie in general. Quality content in general, right? Things that, are, that look aesthetic, graphics, great call to actions, great uh, copy and messages. These are things that you're gonna use to be able to dominate the marketing game. We put very simple videos here together uh, that are gonna just in short 20 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute ads, we explain what our, pro what our products are gonna be doing in a general fashion. Instead of being like, hey, I know you like vitamin D because I saw you purchase my product before. Let me tell you what else I can help you with. Vitamin D is gonna help anybody. It becomes more of a general targeting in general. That's why having the correct message is going to be key. These videos were uh, examples. If you guys want to get these slides, by the way, that link right there at the top allows you to download them. Uh, so I didn't really prepare for that. But if you guys want to type in, save that link, uh, and uh, you can go there and download the slides. ppt.ms. It's a very horrible link. Uh, forward slash, the number three, U, P, as in Paul, K, P, as in Paul, M, as in Mary, P, E. Horrible. So again, I'm improvising here. That's not part of the presentation, but I'm not able to play the videos. If you guys want to see some of the videos that we make here, you can check that out. So I, like I explained, broader targeting is going to be the norm from now on. This is what I told you guys earlier, 250 million people in the United States only. And the demographics are there for every single brand. If you tell me that your brand doesn't have an audience on Facebook, you are lying to yourself. And let me just be very clear about that. Because you have 18 to 24 year olds, 25 to 34, 35 to 44, 45 to 54, and so on. Uh, it's still 59% women and 41% uh, men. It's very, very uh, solid and very similar across social media platforms. TikTok is going to be very heavy on the younger demographic. Instagram is becoming more like Facebook now and is very balanced now to have an older demographic coming in like crazy. And Pinterest is very heavy on females. So every single one is very different. But being in every platform presents you an opportunity to capture people that are not anywhere else. That's one thing that... Um, I want to have you guys think about, because even if you're on Facebook only, 
and your business is doing well, why not put your content and spread that wide in other places because you have other people there that are sticking with one particular platform only. So active users in the USA and worldwide as of second quarter of 2021, look at this, 1.9 billion people are active on Facebook and Instagram every single day. So a lot of people. I don't think any of you guys need more customers than that, <laughs> right? So audiences to focus on, again, these are things that I'm giving you guys an overview of marketing, right, in general, as to what's going to happen and how to focus right now in 2021 and beyond and what to do. There is help, whether you guys get the training or whether you bring a team like us to help you. There's a lot of help to get all these things done. So if you feel a little bit like overloaded, it's because it's a big subject. We're going to get a lot more specific. Like in two weeks, we're going to have a training here. I'm going to deliver it myself on the social media content strategy. We're going to be very focused on that. What do we do to get our messages out there seen by as many people as possible so we can capture attention that's going to increase our potential of bringing in new prospects. But there might, our two audiences, I'm not going to dive into that right now, but there's something called a lookalike audience. If you guys have a customer list, people that have bought things from you before, people that have purchased your products or that have purchased your services before, that is your number one asset for a couple of reasons. Number one, you can give that audience to Facebook and they're going to help you find something called a lookalike audience. And it's not a complicated thing to do. If you guys are feeling like, I want to get that done, but I have no clue how to get it done, um, then you can actually uh, reach out to any of us and we can help you or check out a YouTube video on the subject. All right. So lookalike, lookalike audiences is a great way to take your existing audiences. Let's say you have 100 buyers of your services. You give those 100 buyers to Facebook on a place called the Facebook Business Manager. And Facebook is going to help you find people that have similar traits, age ranges, demographics, interests in general, all those things. And now you have a peop a people that potentially are going to be more interested in your products and services. Custom audiences is basically what Facebook traditionally calls it your data, your information. Somebody that watches videos of your content, you have access to that. Somebody that engages with your profiles, Instagram or Facebook, you have access to that data. These are your uh, pockets of people that you can utilize to keep on building relationships with. So that's something that you still have access to. And let me see how, um, who's feeling a little bit lost or like not knowing what's going on. Anybody has a question at this point? Many, Many questions? Okay, you wanna ask one? You wanna ask one? Okay, good. So I had a lot of content to share with you guys today. I was hoping that I didn't go past the one hour, all right? So we're, we're already at the one hour mark, but let me just go over this very quickly, all right? Lead generation strategies. My top three lead, gener lead generation strategies, specifically there's many things that you can do, but don't get confused by any of this. Uh, we, anybody here was a part of my COVID-19 program last year? Anybody, right? So I opened up a course for a couple of months that I sell for thousands of dollars. And I opened it up, and what did I want it to do? Well, I wanted to help people, first of all, but second of all, I wanted to acquire first party data and take the opportunity that, hey, the world needs help, I'm gonna use it to build our list. And you guys can see the evidence that we grew a little bit, right? So our strategies do work, right? So we had 40 something people before uh, COVID, now we have 97 people, reaching 100, we have this beautiful building, massive expansion, a lot of success. What I'm telling you guys is things that I walk first before I talk about them. So I'm not just making up things. We did a whole strategy in which I'm giving away something of valuable, that something of value that I have for real. I'm not making up value, I'm giving away value in exchange for what? Your information. Because down the road, I feel that I might make your life better. And I really do feel about that. And if you have a good business, you also should feel comfortable about people giving you their information because you have potential to make them better. And that's something that we all have to be confident in. If you don't have that confidence, then you might need to look for another brand because every single brand has the ability to make somebody else better. That's the reality of it. Whoops. Let me see what I did. Okay, over here. Okay, 
So contest is a very, very cool thing to do. Like with Dr. Berg also, we did a contest in which we gave away a small section of one of his programs, just a small section. And, and that, this, this thing that you guys see here, it's, it's uh, what's that? Yeah, it, it's, it's the flow, right? Yeah, so we use a platform here called ManyChat, uh, which is very simple to use, which again, you can learn it yourself or you can hire somebody to do it, but we bring people in, we extract their phone number and email, if you guys scan this QR code, you're going to see ManyChat in action. It's going to require that you use Messenger. You can also use ManyChat for Instagram, and uh, it's Instagram DM. It connects with ManyChat. ManyChat also allows you to extract phone numbers. It also allows you to extract emails. It also allows you to connect your WhatsApp business. So you have one central hub to connect all of it. And I've been a big fan of the platform for a long time, and I'm one of the biggest teachers in the area of ManyChat. Um, our agency won the award, uh, what they call the top performing marketing agency and last year in 2020 because we know how to do that thing well. So you, you take something of value and then you build a flow to say, oh, I'm glad that you're interested in getting my $97 course for free. Well, here's how you're going to get access to it. Come on in. Give me your phone number. Give me your email. Um, this is how you're going to get access to it. How are you going to keep access to it? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to keep you up to date on it or whatever. Like You create a flow about what you want to happen. And this is the beauty of technology. You can automate all of this. You can lead generate. While you're sleeping, people are coming in. Then you're going to have the ability to help them with your products and services. So that, that was my dad. Actually, this, this one right here was the most powerful marketing strategy that I've ever done in my life. And I've done a lot of great things. That one, we took a list from, we, he has a course. Uh, anybody uh, here knows my father, okay? He passed away this year, um, early, the, early, early this year. Now we're pushing his legacy. Uh, but last year, my dad and I worked really close on the subject of marketing, really, really close. He was uh, the son that we all revolved around. He was an incredible guy, very powerful. Last year, I created this crazy strategy and just like always, he will always be like, okay, Manuel, if you say so, let's go. And we were trying to promote his university uh, in which he would train people on uh, the subject of metabolism, aside from our natural sim brand and what we have going on. We took a list that had 10,000 people on it, and we took it to 200, 220,000 people in a matter of six weeks. By giving away for free, for real, it was a real giveaway, something that we will sell for $29, it just went viral explosively viral. So this is a contest because it's not about one person. It's about that one person becomes 10. Those 10 become 100. Those 100 become 1,000. You're getting other people involved. When this is done correctly, you take off. When you look at what we've done in some of our brands, it's not magic. It's strategy. You can call it and be like, oh my God, it's like magical what just happened. No, it was just the correct strategy. You don't win a war with a battle. You win a war with a strategy. Simple as that. How many stories do we have of like the guys that had 300 men? What is that called? The guy that had 300 men that beat the army of 10,000 people, right? Spartans. The Spartans, right? So they won with a strategy, right? They knew exactly where to attack, how to attack, how to use the power that they had available, how to leverage positions and equipment and all that stuff, and they won. A strategy is going to win the game at all times, right? So contests are... Very powerful product flash sales for those of you guys that are e-commerce and maybe you're feeling a little bit more lazy, you can do something more aggressive to generate leads if you have a product that is actually, for example, running out of stock and you're not going to sell more. You can use it for lead generation. Let's say you have 20 products and you have one that you're getting out of the market. That could be your lead generation before you run out of stock, right? So that's something that you can do with it. Product flash sales for lead generation. Uh, something else that you can do, free resources. Uh, in this case, we're giving away a remedy card, how to adapt to keto. That's valuable. People are looking for information so they can actually get more help on the subject of accomplishing success with the ketogenic diet. So this is something that we did for Grand Cardone. Uh, we put together some, uh, some e-books, some PDFs on, for example, this one had 20 rules of closing a deal, and we were targeting people that were trying to be better salesmen and um, people that had uh, leads that they had to close. And we put together some uh, flows to help, help them generate leads. So recipes, and I mean, the ideas are endless, all right? So again, every single one of these things, guys, in the world of marketing, of course, it has a learning curve. You guys got to take it one step at a time. If you get overwhelmed, 
then you end up abandoning all of it. So you gotta take one thing and implement it because there's so many things that you can get done. So you grab one, get it done, accomplish some success with it, feel good about it, and then you can move on to the next one. My three favorite platforms that I use here, a lot of the things that we, we do here at AGM revolve around these three platforms. Our ManyChat, we use it for lead generation. ClickFunnels is lead generation without Messenger, without Instagram. You can create lead generation pages. And uh, Klaviyo is basically our email marketing platform. Every single marketing platform, email marketing is different. For example, if you're a personal brand and you have a message, let's say for me, I'm a marketer, I don't use Klaviyo for my emails. Anybody getting uh, my emails? Raise your hand. I use something called Keep which is Infusionsoft. It used to be called Infusionsoft, it's now called Keep. It's more meant for influencers, personal brands. But for e-commerce, it's Clavio all the way. So it really does depend on what your brand is and what you're trying to accomplish, all right? So many of them work really well. There's fantastic platforms. These are the ones that we just use over here. Obviously for e-commerce, we also are big fans of the Shopify platform. So experienced marketers know their job isn't finished once the shopper makes a purchase. In fact, it's often the post-purchase experience that's the biggest contributor to or detractor from a brand's success. This is important to mention. Consider the fact that 48% of all e-commerce transactions are from repeat customers. So your current customer base may be your greatest as you deal with these changes to data privacy. 48% on e-commerce. On brick and mortar stores, it can be up to 80% in some cases. People that are the easiest ones to close, seven to 10 times easier to close are the ones that already gave you money before. So nurturing people, providing value, staying connected with them so they can continue being, number one, your customers, number two, your brand ambassadors, so they can help you bring people into your buildings, that should be your number one focus. So nurture by basics, Email, messenger, e uh, text messaging, they're all different. I recommend a minimum of three emails a week with value and soft call to actions. You can see here, for example, this is me and Damon John uh, talking about marketing. This past week I was checking out Damon's blog and found one I believe can really be helpful to you. I give them some value and then we do a small call to action to have them come to our website to find out more about what we do. You see another example here on my side for me. Uh, I'm giving value and then I'm inviting into some of the programs that we have going on at the end. Messenger and Instagram direct messaging. If you guys have not uh, been uh, into that world, Instagram direct messenger marketing has been a thing for about four years already, three years or so. Instagram marketing is brand new. Instagram direct messaging marketing is brand new, off the press, just got launched last month. You now have the ability to go into ManyChat and connect your Instagram profile and be able to generate leads and nurture on Instagram and extract phone numbers and emails. It is a brand new marketing platform that has over a billion people actively using it. It's a big deal. So we do messages like we extract uh, subscribers, we give them the value, we engage with them, and we continue to nurture with people uh, all over the world. Uh, every single day, every single week, we're coming up with strategies to continue to nurture these people. So basics of text messaging. Anybody on some text messaging list of brands that they follow? Raise your hand. Curious about it, right? Just for real. Raise your hand for a second. Everybody that's on a text message list for a brand. Okay. If I asked that question three or four years ago, one or two people would have raised their hand. Right now in this room, about 70% of you raised their hand, which means that text messaging marketing for brands has become part and parcel of all brands in general right now, and it's a big deal. If you ask me what is the most important marketing thing that I've implemented over the last two and a half years or so, has been text messaging marketing. The way that we accomplish our growth, both for lead generations at AGM and for natural slim revenue and sales and everything, text messaging is a big part of what we do. With text, which we control, because we have that phone number directly, we can send them to do activities like go visiting a, a blog, watching a new video, finding more about an offer, tune into a Facebook Live, engage with me along the way. So your, your customer list of phone numbers is your number one most valuable asset that you're gonna have, at least for the next 10 years. Phone numbers has to be a central part of 
your focus as a brand, bringing people into your world and extracting that phone number in general. We do text messages over here to promote our products. So my marketing philosophy when it comes to text messaging and email, people tell me, I, you know, you don't know how many times I've, um, I've actually gotten people to tell me, I don't want to email my people more than once a month because I don't want to spam them, I don't want to bother them. Here's my policy, and you can create whatever you want to create yourself. People either block you or buy from you. And it's very, very simple for people to block you today. It takes about two or three clicks and you're out. I don't know how many times I block some of the brands and then I see their messages again and I'm like, let me opt in again, all right? Even politicians, if I'm getting polit political here, uh, I like to opt in to their, uh, their messaging so I, so I can see what they're doing. And I can tell you that is, I don't know if you guys saw the Super Bowl commercial for Trump, for example. All he was promoting was text messaging. Politicians are going deep with text messaging marketing. And they're sending messages every single day because they control that relationship. They control it. And nobody can stop them from messaging their people all right, or block that information. So block or buy is my policy. You send messages every day because it's about numbers of qualified people on your lines. The more you have of them, the greater chances you're going to have of getting qualified people buying your products and getting your services. So grow the list and communicate to them every single day. Minimum three emails a day text messages every day. So here's a question, right? Do you believe in your business? If you guys are business owners and you have a product and a service, if you're a creative mind, if you're an artist, do you believe that your brand can make somebody else better somehow? If the answer is yes, then you need to realize that you have an ability, just like these guys have. I like to describe that as a superpower, which is how you make somebody else better. All of these guys have a superpower. Powers of flight, right? This guy is like high-tech gear. He's like, man, this guy is so ninja. I would call him a ninja, but he's Batman. Uh, powered armor suit, this guy, superhuman strength. Four, right? Superhuman strength, speedy agility. What is the thing that you have that's going to make somebody else better? I can tell you what I have. I can take your business and make it more successful. I can get you more leads of qualified prospects, and I can get more people buying your products, which is going to help you get more revenue, which is going to help you get more staff, help your family, help your staff. That's my superpower. And I try to do it every single day across my agency, our group over here with our clients. That's my focus. And I know the better I am at it, the more business I get. So you guys have to be confident on what your superpower is. My dad's superpower was his ability to make somebody else feel better about themselves, help them accomplish their own goals, help them feel energetic, help them increase their metabolism, give them something that's supposed to be very complicated, explained in very simple terms that they can go and apply and see results with it. That was the superpower that I had. And that's why he was so big, so massive. So what is your business's superpower? Right? So no matter what that is, whether it's real estate, whether you, cure, you, you, you clean pools, whether you're a designer, a fashion expert, a, a, a consultant in business, whether you uh, change roofs, you all have an ability to accomplish something, and that is your superpower. Whoa, that was a lot. So recap, digital marketing is beginning to feel like traditional marketing. That's what's happening. There's plenty of opportunity today, and we talked about that, lead generation, focusing on first-party data. You have an incredible ability right now to bring in people into your world, and all you gotta do is create a couple of these assets, and off you go. Acquisition of first-party data is the name of the game. Creators become senior again like the Mad Men days. Anybody seen the Mad Men show? Love the show, right? So these guys are creative minds. They're, the, the subject of capturing attention and being a marketer right now has taken a whole new definition. And basically, it's gone back to Mad Men days in which you had to get creative and you had to focus on what can you put on the canvas so you can inspire people and get them to pay attention to your brand and your business. Right now, creatives are super important. Before, any trashy video was going to get you traffic. You're going to be able to get revenue. Not anymore. So that has to be a big focus of your attention. Audience targeting needs to be broader, meaning that we're not going to have the ability to micro-target people based on exact things about that person's life. You're not going to have that data anymore. Because, you know, the valuable thing about 
the internet, the incredible thing is that we had this thing called the World Wide Web. And the World Wide Web, one person right here would visit pieces of digital real estate. And wherever they went, that data was accumulated everywhere. And when this person landed over here, they would come in with this humongous digital footprint of data. So when they come to Facebook now, and they visit Facebook after they went to Amazon, they went to Shopify sites, they went to visit, I don't know, um, so, um, Ralph Lauren's website and Nordstrom and this other website and this one over here and they bought this and maybe they window shopped over that one and maybe they added this one to cart but then they said no I don't like that one I'm going to go to Amazon all that data was being given back to Facebook and Instagram and that's not happening anymore so because of that the whole thing is cancelled when somebody comes over here they're going to come empty the same way that they actually uh, started that whole digital journey process. That's the reality. That's why we emphasize first party data. Audience targeting is going to be broader now, broader messages in general. Without nurture, no brand will succeed. This is very important. It's a strong statement. A lot of people don't have nurture in place. They have a business, but they're just basically coping with leads and trying to generate enough revenue so they can pay payroll and keep on surviving without focusing on creating a real nurture line. A nurture line is an email line, a text messaging line, a Facebook messenger line, an Instagram direct messaging line, a WhatsApp line. That's a real nurture line. You got to keep in mind that not one of them is going to be enough. Email is not enough. Email has a 20% and lower open rate. So you got to get phone numbers along the way, because if you don't get phone numbers out of every 100 leads, 20 of them are going to see your messages and 80 of them are not. When you send a text message, 95% of them see it. See what a big difference that is? You get 100 phone numbers, 95 of them are going to see your messages. You get 100 emails, 20 of them are going to see your messages. So focusing on acquisition of both Points of contact is absolutely crucial. But no brand will continue thriving on this new era of marketing unless they are acquiring identities along the way. That's the biggest takeaway that I can tell you guys from today. Discovering and spreading your brand superpower is how you win in digital. We talked about that briefly. Finding that superpower and understanding it and spreading it in digital on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and everywhere, and trying to make people better so you can earn their respect, so they can start trusting you. So when you make them offers, they actually believe in your offer, and they come in and buy your stuff. That's the road to success in this environment. Some of you guys here, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or you're here, you're going to trust me a little bit more when I present to you an offer, which, by the way, I will present to you an offer tonight. So you're going to trust me a little bit more tonight because I gave you all this information and all this value. And that's how I've done a lot of the things that I've done successfully over the years is by making people trust me more so I can get an opportunity to help them and make them better. Right? Organic content and distribution are going to be key. Having a strategy in which you can put content organically without having to pay for advertising. Just simply put content organically on these platforms. Creating a social media channel correctly, a Facebook page, properly describing what your brand is about, posting content on that page every day on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, on all these platforms is going to be essential for any brand moving forward. People are going to be discovering on these platforms your brand and you need to be there and you need to be there consistently. Some of you guys are going to take off because you're good at content creation. Some of you guys are going to take longer, but regardless, your process of creating content gets better with time, just like riding a bicycle. You learn it along the way. This process also will get better with time. Okay, so anybody has ideas flowing already? Raise your hand if you do. Okay, good. I know we, we, we did a very big overview. It is our first workshop here. So I, I wanted to give you guys just a big overview of uh, what the world looks like. Uh, I just recently got one myself in San Diego, 
And I'm excited about the opportunity and I'm excited about the world, but we just gotta adjust, right? So I'm hoping that you guys trust me more, Facebook, YouTube people that are here, and you guys that are here so I can keep on providing you guys the information that you need to succeed in this environment, all right? So now, with your permission, I wanna talk about something that we're doing right here. Um, anybody know uh, who Damon John is? Raise your hand. Okay, so Damon and I, uh, Damon, uh, if you guys don't know who he is, he's uh, the co-host of the Shark Tank, and uh, also known as the People's Shark, and he is uh, one of the greatest entrepreneurs of all time, and uh, somebody that is highly respected in that community. About a year ago, we, we started collaborating with each other, and he promotes our stuff all over social media, and we put together a, a service called the Social Media Setups and Launching Pad, which it's extremely valuable, and we realized that a lot of people, I had to go back to some basics on the social media world so they can be fully set up before they start going lead generation heavy or any of that stuff. Because social media is still a massive opportunity, but the focus has to be acquiring prospects, but you need to have the social media channels properly set up and be ready to actually advertise so you can get all the things that we talked about today executed. So the AGM team, which is 97 staff today, we're a combination of remote staff and local staff. We have 30 people on the building here and we got 67 people remotely in 10 countries. Uh, we're here to help you. Uh, we have the service called Shark AGM. Uh, we're taking in 20 new customers this week. Uh, we can't do any, anything more than that. So I'll explain to you guys in a second what the service is about. And it's gonna be the solution to get going with what I talked about today. So you guys can actually start leveraging all the opportunities that we mentioned today. Um, anybody that wants to check that out, this is the website, sharkagm.com forward slash setup. But I'm gonna explain to you guys in a second what that is and what, if, what we have on it. We also have, uh, I wanna mention here that a lot of you guys are already doing well in social media. You have been growing and maybe you've been uh, getting results, but you need a marketing team. We also have a lot of services, for example, social media advertising, messenger marketing, Amazon account management, Amazon ranking services, content creation services, YouTube SEO. We're responsible over here for about 10 million subscribers on YouTube. We built YouTube channels from scratch. We know how to do that really well. Branding strategies, marketing strategies, or you can even hire me to help you with your marketing. There's a lot of things that we do uh, in general, but I'm talking to you guys about the social media setups for those of you guys that need to just get going and get these things properly set up and without having to commit to something longer term. Uh, if you guys wanna to talk to somebody about, from our team, we have some guys over here, Charlie, Adam, Michael, uh, we have Loran somewhere around here. Uh, that these guys are uh, marketing consultants. If you guys wanna to talk to them about your business, uh, if you wanna find out how we can help them, how we can help you guys with your marketing, you can schedule a call with any of them, agmagency.com forward slash marketing help, agmagency.com forward slash marketing help. That's gonna open up their calendars and you can actually book a time to talk to them and they'll listen to what you have going on and they'll tell you how they believe we can help you and we can go from there. But today we're talking about the social media setups and launching pad. I'm gonna take about five, seven minutes talking about this if you guys are okay with it. You guys are okay with it? Raise your hand. Okay, great. Uh, what's included in this service? Uh, social media profiles set up, completed on three different major platforms. So for example, a Facebook page, an Instagram uh, uh, profile, and a um, LinkedIn channel, or a Pinterest channel, or a TikTok channel. It depends on your brand, and that's something that we figure out with you on our first call. We're gonna find out based on your brand and what you're trying to accomplish, exactly what are the platforms that you need to get started with. And we get those set up correctly from the start. Banners, images, graphics, copy, content, all of it for that particular profile. Social media marketing platform setup. This is for advertising. So for example, we're gonna set up your Facebook business manager. So you actually have your pages connected on it, your assets, your Instagram profiles, all of it set up inside your world that you control so you can actually start, start running some advertising. But not only that, we talked about lead generation, right? Acquiring prospects. We're gonna create an asset for you. We're gonna use our own experience and we're gonna build out an asset that you can use to get prospects in your world. It's a lead generation asset. Depending on what your brand is, we might build, we might build an ebook or a quiz or a resource, or we might do one of my favorite ones, if you know how to produce content, which is a mini course in which we take 
your content, and we structure it in a way that somebody can come in and get a lot of value and you can get phone numbers and emails and even present an offer at the end of that particular asset. These assets serve as lead generation, but they also present offers at the end, but not before you provide value first. The, the route is value first. So we're going to do something for you here. Basically, that's going to include setting up your ManyChat channel, which is the thing that I've been talking about, which is something that is also called a bot. It's going to be an automated system for you to get people on your world, provide value, and keep on selling your products and services along the way. We're going to do free social media lead generation ads. So we're also going to structure an entire campaign for you to generate leads. We take your asset that we created, your video, your graphic, your quiz, all of it, and we create ads for you. We take our best experts and we create, uh, we do call to actions, uh, we do copy, we do the, the entire ad structure. We even find your audience for you and we set it up inside the Facebook Business Manager. All you have to do, this is literally the next best thing to hiring a marketing agency because a marketing agency is going to charge you thousands of dollars a month. What we're doing here is one time you get it done, we hand over the keys and you keep it going yourself whether yourself or a marketing director in your company. But we set it up with our own standards. In our world, the way that we see this is basically an opportunity for you to find out how we can help you, get some benefit with our technology and our training, and then hopefully one day you're getting so many good results that you're ready to have a marketing team fully take over your marketing and have us help you with your needs in general. So we're going to create a video ad, a carousel ad, a single image ad, and we're going to get it all set up and ready for you. You're going to get a social media marketing expert, somebody like this guy right here. He's actually a real person. His name is Brad. He works right there in that corner. And he's the one responsible for helping you get the entire service delivered from beginning to end so you can get the exact products that you were looking for. Uh, access, not only that, not only are we giving you the training, is that like Oprah style, right? Like, but that's, that's not all, right? Uh, not only are we giving you the services, this is a lot of services that we're doing, we're giving you access to training. For example, Damon, Damon John, one of the greatest business minds of all time, he has a course called Mastering Social Media in which you learn how to create a content calendar, how to put together a strategy for marketing, how to uh, utilize the platforms in general. Aside from my training that you're going to get also, I'm going to talk about it in a second, you get Damon's training on how to use social media successfully to grow a brand in general. That training is worth a lot of money and it's, all, it's also part of this. Uh, access to AGMs, our teams, social media marketing training. You get, for example, training yourself if you want to learn how to master ManyChat, uh, how to close sales with copywriting, uh, becoming a Facebook Ads Ninja, uh, how to be a better Amazon seller, uh, e-commerce growth hacking, massive lead generation, a lot of training. You get access to all of it too uh, with this particular offer. Some people that have been a part of it, uh, AGM are the best of the best. This is a review on Google. I have used other marketing people in the past, now just AGM. To me, aside from getting great products, being able to communicate my needs and actually being listened to are very important. The team at AGM are experienced professionals that know their business and skills and actually listen, understand, advise, guide, and produce excellent products that help you succeed. Great value, great service. Great return on my investment. I already have asked for more. That's great. I have in full, full disclosure. I hadn't even read this, this uh, testimony before. Uh, Mark says, after years of going through various marketing firms, I think I finally found a team I want to work with, um, professional, knowledgeable, and so on. So what do we get? Free social media channels set up and customized for your brand, social media marketing platform set up, Facebook Business Manager, lead generation at a set up, um, as a set up, $1,000. Free social media, lead generation, I set up a thousand, a social media marketing expert, another thousand dollars. Access to Damon John's training is $495. The course is being sold for $495. You guys check it out, damonondemand.com. You will see what the price is. Access to AGM's social media marketing training, $2,000. That's what we sell the course for in the training. Um, you will think that that's worth $7,500 at least, right? Okay, well, just for the next couple of days, guys, and I know you guys might, might have not gotten prepared for this today, so I, I think uh, Jesus said, you don't need to bring your wallet, right? Jesus said. He's like, Mano, I told them they didn't, bring the, <laughs> they didn't need to bring the wallet. Okay, good, I'm going to give you a couple of days. If anybody wants to sign up um, by Friday, this is basically going to be the price right now, $2,500. But not only that, all right, 
Um, again, we have 20 spaces right now at this point. You, all you got to do is pay $1,250 now, and then we work our butts off for you, and the other $1,250 you paid at the end because I want you to trust me so we don't get the other part until you're happy, until you say, what a great product, I'm happy. Social media is set up, uh, we got a business manager set up, we got copy done, we got videos done by, by the AGM team. This is ridiculous, guys. I mean, we don't, we don't do this for any other reason but to service people, all right? At the level that we're at and generating the revenue that we're doing, we wanna get an opportunity to help you guys and that's how we prove ourselves to you. So 1250 now and then 1250 at delivery. The delivery takes about six weeks we start working with you, we have meetings with you, we ask questions about your brand, we have our creative minds start understanding everything that you guys are, have going on. It doesn't matter what your business is, whether you're in construction or whether you are in, uh, in beauty or whether you are in weight loss and health, it doesn't matter what your business is, we understand your business and we understand that you need attention because we all need attention and then we structure everything around that particular uh, business that you have whatever your message is, whatever your superpower is. And then we set it up. And when, when we turn it over to you, you're gonna have assets created, all ready to go. You literally, all, has, all you have to do is, oh, I'm ready, boom, let's go. Let's generate some leads, bring them in, all right? Now at that point, I will tell you that I, I will be lying if I told you that you guys don't have to work anymore. Now you can go drink pina coladas, but it doesn't work like that. You guys have to work on your account. Um, something that you would have to build is the nurture process, right? You have to, if I'm giving you leads, you have to create an email line and you have to start sending messages and all that thing has to be done. Either you do it yourself, we're gonna give you the training for it, or you hire a team to get it done for you, all right? So, only 20 spots available. Uh, I'm not gonna sell something that I cannot deliver. So this is not a sales technique. I'm telling you guys, I cannot take in more than 20 people at a time. If, you, if more than 20 people buy, we're gonna put them for a later time uh, so we can continue to deliver and not slow people down too much, all right? So if you guys wanna be a part of that, there's two ways to sign up if you're ready to go. I'm hoping that some of you guys are ready to go uh, with this particular uh, service. You can visit sharkagm.com for a setup and sign up right now on your phone. Uh, or you can talk to one of these guys right here and they'll sign you up personally. If any of you guys are ready, you can raise your hand right now. Anybody's ready to sign up? Interested or more questions? Raise your hand. Talk to my treasure. Tre okay. Okay. Well, okay, why don't you go with Charlie right now and talk to him a little bit more about it and then you can coordinate that and get started with that process. Anybody has any questions now? I actually, I'm done with the presentation, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot more of this. Uh, so hopefully you guys keep on coming and we're potentially gonna have an offer every single time that, we, that you guys come. But hey, I promise you something. I'm not running a nonprofit organization. I'm running a business. So I'm here to help you guys out in exchange for my help. Uh, you guys are gonna give us a little bit of your money uh, once in a while so we can help you out. Keep on growing, all right? As simple as that. Anybody has any questions? On social media questions. Give, uh, give, you give it to Gabby? What are the questions coming in? Well, um, I don't know if she's listening. Glad Margarita says she's raising her hand. And, oh, but Ali got to her and said she's interested in the offer. So, and she also wants to come by. So I think they're, they're answering her on, on Facebook. Great. So anybody that wants to come here physically, we are open Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. The office is open. You guys can come at any time. Uh, you can go ahead and book a call with the sales team. Uh, you can go to agmagency.com forward slash uh, marketing help. agmagency.com forward slash marketing help and you will talk to one of our marketing consultants about helping them with uh, their brand, all right? So we any other a, questions? We have a question from Jonathan on YouTube. Uh, he says, I work in real estate and I'm, and I'm trapped with the special ad category for Facebook ads, any tips? So it's like housing or credit or something like that. Special ad category. Well, you, gotta, you gotta be approved for it, Jonathan. Uh, if you're approved, then you're good to go. We have a brand here that we've been helping for a few years who sells toys, but they have one toy, which is a Donald Trump figure. Um, again, I'm not political here. I have a client that I help that, that is political. Uh, so they're approved with the special ad category and we're, we're able to promote the products really well. There was a limitation uh, for poli pol uh, politi uh, political ads for a good 
period of time after the election, just before and for months afterwards. Uh, but that has been lifted, and you can advertise now special ad category, which is usually housing, credit, employees, uh, looking for employment, uh, etc. One thing that I can tell you as a, le as a lesson that I learned uh, in the world of social media marketing is that when you're recruiting people on social media, it is illegal to target by demographics. Uh, I was... Um, um, I made that mistake myself, and we did get in trouble. There was an account that I lost that I was not able to, ever to, to recover, and it's because I was ignorant about it, and I was trying to find a specific demographic. But for recruiting, for hiring people, it's against the law. You cannot have targeting that is um, directed to a cer towards a certain age, or even sex, or obviously religious, or none of those things. You can't discriminate. So, but special ad categories is something that you can actually get help with, and we can help you here get that all set up. Ms. Sherry from Facebook says, uh, I'm a floral designer. I like to see my products as making someone smile. Is that considered a superpower uh, or solving a problem? Absolutely. So, so your, your floral designs are beautiful and aesthetic, and they inspire other people. And, and they inspire, it's, you're an artist. Just like somebody painting um, uh, a, a piece of art or somebody that's designing something, you're an artist. So if you communicate that thing, that is your superpower. People are gonna wanna see your process. And even though you teach them exactly how you're putting your art together, your flowers together, they're gonna buy stuff from you. Nobody's gonna go out there and build it themselves. They are still gonna wanna get your stuff because you become unique in that particular sense, right? It's like uh, an analogy that I can give all of you guys here. If you want to have a mechanic shop full of uh, cars that you need to fix and a line of people, you go to social media and you teach people on social media all day long how to do everything for their car. Fix the spark plugs, change the oil, uh, fix trans transmissions, uh, engine repairs, all of it. Teach them every single thing and I guarantee you that you're gonna have a line of people that want your help and your services, no matter what. So the idea of giving too much information or showing too much is not accurate in this world. It's like, this is how you get attention. You, you wanna differentiate yourself by providing value and by giving people that particular knowledge that gives you uh, their trust, that is gonna lead them towards them being able to buy something from you in the past, in the future. Like if you guys wanna learn marketing, I'm teaching a lot of it. Like I'm, I'm, I have a video on YouTube every single day, rolling out. I don't know who's completely, who's completely new to my world. Raise your hand. Okay. So I put a video out on social media every single day, several on Facebook and Instagram. I put a YouTube video every single day. There's a brand new video coming out every day. If you wanted to learn marketing, you don't have to buy our services. You can go in there and do it all day long. But what I do create. What I do create is trust that I know what I'm doing and that I'm probably gonna get there faster than you. So that's what I'm trying to do. You wanna get there faster, you hire us. You wanna build your own path, you go and study. And I'm giving you all the information and it's out there. I have people, we have our, our business called Natural Sam. We have people that call us today that said, I have been watching your content for four years. I never purchased something, but you have made my life better by this, by that, by this, by that. I'm ready to buy something from you. That's the reality. Volume of content and putting yourself out there and giving that value to them and showing them what you're good at is gonna be the long road for your success, all right? Anybody else has any other questions? So Rob has a question? Microphone, oh, over there? No. Okay. So the question is, uh, how to focus on business to business. Business to business, you gotta have the right platforms. So for example, and I will tell you right away that um, TikTok would not be your focus, right? Uh, Instagram might not be your focus, but you might wanna be on Facebook, and you might wanna be on LinkedIn, and you might wanna be on YouTube. Those are your free platforms, because business owners are getting education all the time. I'm looking for information, and I am browsing on Facebook, and I am on LinkedIn all the time. So people like myself, which I'm, I will be your target, you will find them on Facebook and YouTube and LinkedIn. So putting content on these platforms, talking about what you're good at, and presenting problem-solving content to them, 
the best way to go about it is on those platforms. So we do help business to business and you can generate leads. Facebook and LinkedIn have great lead generation strategies. They both can help you capture identities without you even having to send them outside of Facebook. For example, Facebook has a campaign called Facebook Lead Ads. That's what it's called. You can actually get their information on Facebook without them ever leaving the site. When somebody leaves the site, first of all, right now you're gonna be more blind. Second of all, you don't get to see that journey like you used to and people convert at a lower rate. If you get people on Facebook to say, you know, you get to say, hey, are you interested in getting our help with uh, optimizing your performance for your system, for your brand or for your business or whatever it is that your business is about, what it works on, what it focuses on, making you more productive. Uh, I'm going to give you a free evaluation. Uh, it's going to be a 30 uh, minute evaluation. We're going to show you what you're missing out on, whatever. Give me your information and we're going to schedule a call. You can get phone numbers and emails directly on Facebook with a Facebook lead ad campaign. A simple video, a simple image. You can spend maybe anywhere. Obviously, B2B is going to be lower volume, way lower than Natural Slim, us getting people interested in weight loss, right? So you're going to have to pay more per lead, but you can still acquire leads, people that you can service, and you can get into that process. So maybe I pay a dollar or two for a lead. Maybe you have to pay 10 or $12 for a lead. But if you provide that value to them, and if you are selling a service that costs $5,000, if you bring in 100 leads for $10, what is that, 10,000? All you gotta do is like sell a service for 5,000 that you can um, maybe bring 40 leads and, uh, and close one of them, and you're making money. Obviously, your sales process has to get better with time. Like you have to be a good salesman that as those leads come in, you have to nurture and you have to have the ability to close. Because it's not that the quality on Facebook is low, it might be that your process is broken. Because people are people, right? Prospects are prospects. You gotta fix your process along the way. So Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, that would be the focus, right? We have a question back there, but while you get back there, I have a question on Facebook from Maria Pinto. How's WhatsApp for business? Um, says, I'm just afraid to sign up for it for my business. I think she says, um, maybe means I'm afraid to sign up. Like, is this going to work with WhatsApp? So WhatsApp for business is, uh, it's, it's about to catch fire. It is a major opportunity, especially for people that are outside the USA, because WhatsApp is the biggest messaging platform in the world. Um, so if you want to generate leads of people in other countries, Latin America, for example, WhatsApp for business is absolutely essential. Uh, you can use ManyChat to connect with, with WhatsApp, and you can create a, a WhatsApp account uh, and um, start creating strategies to bring people in, and you can generate their, uh, the, the leads, bring them in, and also nurture the people uh, in WhatsApp. So WhatsApp is a great opportunity. It's not something to be scared about. It is a great platform that has a lot of attention, and it's just getting started. They literally just opened up their API a few months ago, and uh, you have the ability now to integrate automated messages on WhatsApp. So Europe, um, the Latin American world, it is huge with WhatsApp. So if you guys want to generate a big boom of prospects, uh, I would definitely focus on uh, making WhatsApp a priority of yours, for sure. OK, one more, because it's almost like 8 o'clock <laughs> already. Thanks. Um, Jonathan had a question earlier about the special ad category for Facebook. Uh, he said he was banned from there. Um, or, or like he's kind of blocked because he can't use it. Uh, you mentioned something about getting approved. Uh, what does that look like? Well, if it was banned, it depends, right? Because there's still things that are banned. For example, sex toys, cannabis, those things you cannot advertise. You cannot advertise weapons on Facebook. So if, if, you, if you have one of those products, then the strategy for somebody that has a product like that is to generate leads, and then you can do whatever the heck you want on your own central files. If you have an email list or a text messaging list, they cannot stop you from communicating. So you can create lead magnets around that and bring them on. But if, if you have something that could get approved, that you have a political, housing, employment, credit, those things can get approved. You might be banned. It's a process that over here at AGM, you can hire our team so we can try to handle something that's wrong. In the past, we've done it successfully. So it depends. If you want to talk to one of the guys, we, if you have a banned account, we have recovered 
Uh, most of those accounts that I worked with, we have been able to recover them. So that's something for you. We can probably help you with that if that's a problem that you have. Okay, and, and, and what does the approval process look like? Like if somebody wanted to apply to, to get approved for like target marketing for like people in real estate. Well, well, Dan, did you go, did you go for that process recently on yes. the... Uh, if you, if you your ID grab your microphone, grab the microphone. To get approved on Facebook for the restricted ad categories, you normally have to give them your ID and they will ask you some information about your business and they'll go through a, a vetting process. Usually can take around a week or so. In some cases, they'll mail you like a postcard to validate your address. So they'll mail you a postcard with a code on it to make sure you're an American resident depending on or, the category. Or, something or you like have that. to upload some proof of your address, like a, a bill or something that you've gotten at home. Yeah, so you've got to show that you're a real human. Here's my experience so far uh, with the world of Facebook and getting approved. Only one time in my seven-year Facebook advertising career, I have not been able to accomplish getting a ban lifted. Only one time. And we manage hundreds of accounts. What I can tell you is persistence is the key. If you keep on pushing and trying to get the approval, you will eventually get it. You talk to one person, you don't get a handle, talk to another person, you eventually talk to the right person. The same thing has happened to me on Amazon, for example. Like if I have a product banned or uh, restricted, I talk to one person, I'm sorry, I apologize, nothing I can do. I reach out again, I reach out again, I reach out again until I get it to lift. And it's been magical, I'm telling you. Like, it's, it's, it's the one thing, just like it's succeeding in business, you gotta persist until you accomplish it. Getting the, um, the restrictions lifted from these platforms, every single time, uh, even this guy right here, weren't you like banned on Facebook for like <laughs> a billion years and you eventually got it resolved? Yeah, several times. Because uh, he, was, he, was, <laughs> he, was actually, he was actually eventually just kept on insisting until he got that thing. Profile, personal profiles banned, uh, ad accounts banned, business managers banned. Remember that these guys are so big, Facebook is so massive that they have to think with robots. They can't think with humans. They don't have the ability to look at a micro level what you did wrong. So you have to keep on going until you actually get to talk to somebody that is able to listen to your case. Now, if you're doing something shady, black hatty, then I support Facebook for having you banned. <laughs> That's the case. I mean, I, I actually have turned uh, the door um, to a lot of clients, opened the door to clients that they're like, oh, I have this business that does this. And, you know, if it's something that goes against what I believe in, like selling marijuana, you know, you can walk out the door, right? That's not something I believe in. So, you know, it's like, it depends on what you're trying to do. So if, if you're trying to do something that goes against Facebook and their policies, then there's no hope on that one, right? No matter how much you try. All right, guys, so thank you very much for attending our workshop. Um, um, Thank you very much for keep making the effort to be here with us in person. Thank you guys all on Facebook and YouTube for being here with us. And um, hopefully you're comfortable in your home. And um, I appreciate you guys believing in us and trusting in us. If you have any questions, please reach out. Uh, if you guys are on an email list, um, we're going to be promoting our future workshops. Uh, the next one is going to be in two weeks. We have uh, now a, a system in place in which we're going to be rolling out these events. Uh, Carly that you see over there in the corner. Uh, she's going to be running these events every couple of weeks, and uh, we're going to be bringing experts like this guy's uh, chief marketing officer at AGM, that guy over there with the big beard. He's a copywriting expert and a genius marketer himself. Uh, we got master marketers like Dan over here uh, sitting with the, um, next to Jimmy. Uh, and then we got a lot of people. Jimmy's a creative mind. AGM is full of talented people, and we want to open up the doors and show you guys what we're doing, so hopefully you can take some of those things home and implement it and get some results. All right, so thank you very much, guys, and um, I'll see you on the next workshop, all right? Make sure you scan your QR code.